Welcome to TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Have you ever noticed how garbage trucks were made to pick up garbage, fire trucks were made to fight fire, and ambulances were made to help people? Well, what about police cars? See, normally those are just retrofitted regular cars, but not anymore. We're here in San Jose to meet a company, Carbon Motors, that's looking to change that. All right, so we're here with Stacy Stevens, former police officer and VP and Chief Marketing Officer at Carbon Motors. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me. So take me a little bit through the process of how you guys came to be. So I was a police officer in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, and what I realized very early on in my career was there's no such thing as a purpose-built police car. Everything is a retail passenger car. It's been upfitted with a bunch of aftermarket equipment, and what we like to call a Mr. Potato-headed fashion. Okay. So none of the equipment, none of the law enforcement equipment was ever designed, engineered, or manufactured to be a part of the police car. And what's most appalling to me as a police officer is nobody ever goes back and recertifies the vehicle as safe. So the computer that's in there comes off and hits someone, or Correct. a baton stick holder comes unbolstered. Or something's mounted right in front of an airbag deployment zone. I mean, a 100 mile an hour missile shooting at yeah. you because the airbag goes off. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. How do you feel in the driver's seat there? Uh, it feels uh, remarkably different from my old patrol car. Yeah, it is I'll bet. much more comfortable. Plus, I got everything right here at my fingertips. Right, so right. Now I've got everything right here on my steering wheel. So I've got my push to talk for the two way radios, presets for the emergency lights here. And you got this cool, huge touch screen right here. That's the heart of the vehicle. It's called ORCA. ORCA stands for Onboard Rapid Command Architecture. This is the interface for the officer, not only to access all the law enforcement equipment, but also the automotive side, which is totally different than the way law enforcement vehicles are done today. You can plug in the OBD, and now you can see, okay, there's a problem with the lights, or there's a problem with the radar, or there's a problem with the camera, yeah. something's going wrong. That's Everything's cool. tied in, and it's done through this user interface yeah. here. I see you've got uh, buttons here for heated and cooled seats. And we also have heated and cooled cup holders uh, for which the is ultimate awesome. comfort. The ultimate in comfort, yes. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the tech and the features that are in this E7. Absolutely. So some of the other things that we have, infrared camera. Obviously being able to see at night is a critical component for law enforcement work. License plate recognition cameras. It can read up to 1,500 license plates per minute. Highway closure speed, so you can get vehicles going in the opposite direction. Now, we actually saw this kind of technology uh, in an episode that we did with LAPD, mm -hmm. but it was kind of clunky and it was on the roof, and I don't see that on the E7. You guys have, have integrated it? That's correct. You look just under the fascia, you'll see the two rectangular cameras. We've integrated it as part of the body, just like all of the other equipment, and it's been tested. So all the electronics work together. Officers are in their car eight to 12 hours a day. Do you want your cop that is pulling you over to give you a ticket to be grouchy? No. The seats were designed specifically for somebody who's wearing a plethora of on-body gear. You'll see there's cutouts in the seat for the gun to go, for your radio to go, for your handcuffs to go. Then we have coach doors. People yes. look at the car and they, wow, the door's open backwards. Yes. You want the officer to be safe, so we reverse the seat belt. We open the door in a rear hinge manner so the biomechanics work better for inserting somebody into the vehicle. And then it gives you an added layer of protection. So now you have two doors that are blocking from both sides mm. and you have just a little bit more concealment. Why has no one done that? That just seems like, uh, duh, right? Because there's no such thing as a purpose-built police car yep. until now. Okay. What excites you the most out of this? You know, this is a passion project, obviously. The most exciting thing for me is uh, I had always wanted to help. I've been to one too many police funerals, and uh, that's not a that's not a fun experience. Yeah. And if I can bring one more officer home, if I can prevent one more officer from getting injured in any way uh, by making his vehicle safer and giving him the proper tools to do his job, I will have considered myself wildly successful. That's awesome. And that's the most most exciting to me. Yeah, very cool. Now, a normal police vehicle ranges from 
28 to 32,000, is that right? That's what you're looking at for the donor vehicle. Then you have to add the lights, the sirens, uh, the computers, the cameras, and everything else. And you take so, it to the shop and get them to tweak then it. Then you got labor added yep. onto it as well. That number varies greatly. I've seen vehicles well in excess of $100,000. I've seen them maybe as low as about 38 or 37. That's not very common, uh, but it does happen. So yeah, it's all over the map. And the Carbon E7 will actually be competitive with that price. Okay. We've got about 50 different options on the vehicle. The agency can select which options they want, which options they don't want. Much better total cost of ownership from fuel, preventative maintenance. Less time in the shop, more time on the street. Tell me a little bit about the process of crowdsourcing. We formed the Carbon Council. The Carbon Council is our users group. So that includes not just the law enforcement officers, but also the mechanics who work on the vehicles, uh, city officials who have anything to do with the pro uh, procurement of the vehicles, budgeting, mayors, city councils, everybody. We wanted to include anybody who has anything to do with the, the life cycle of the vehicle. That's how we were able to come up with a vehicle that had 115 plus requirements. And then we answered 98% of those requirements wow. for them. So recently you guys had a $300 million loan from the government kind of taken back. Tell me a little bit about how that happened. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, didn't work out. Uh, many things, both politically and maybe not so politically, happened. Uh, we didn't get the loan. The Section 136 loan program was all but shut down. I think it's still running, but uh, they cleared the pipeline. Unfortunately, it put a lot of people out of business. We had a fantastic team that all got together and said, okay, we need to figure out what we're gonna do, how we're gonna move forward. And the CT7 is the answer to that. The E7 is a very large scale production program. And we want to do something a little bit smaller that was a little bit more tenable and financeable. Unfortunately, after shooting this episode, Carbon Motors shut down operations. Not an uncommon occurrence in the automotive startup space, but hopefully they were able to highlight the need for a purpose-built police vehicle and maybe another company will pick up where they left off. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.